I think there's a lot that can be learned from Northern Ireland for other countries around the world. Different countries can look at our model of peace and how, for example, we got women at the table with the Women's Coalition. The world can learn so much from the Good Friday Agreement. Obviously, it's an amazing accomplishment that the whole of Northern Ireland and the South of Ireland and England came towards and you know made this agreement that brought peace to Northern Ireland after so many years. I think it all starts with a conversation and I mean I think the Good Friday Agreement probably nearly didn't happen because people didn't want to sit in the same room as people they were fighting with but you know here we are today. I think that dialogue is the foundation. The Good Friday Agreement it wasn't, it wasn't the finish point, it was the starting point. It was the point that encouraged the people of the community to start and drive the change. One of the, um, the things about the Good Friday Agreement was that people had to compromise. Um, so they pulled together parties from all um, sides of the political spectrum. It's not a perfect piece, but at least we can have conversations with different politicians who you know, have controversial views. I think it's important for people to learn that peace building isn't a, a goal that can be achieved. It's a process, and it's a process that then needs to be folded into everything that you do in society. We are shaped, whether we want to be or not, we're shaped by what has happened in our past. So without looking at it and learning from it and not making the same mistakes again, um, we can't really progress into the future. Make sure that you are talking to each other still. Um, you're engaging with like local community centres, organisations, your neighbours um, and working together. When you're speaking about peace and when you're having these conversations about compromise or how to move forward or if we should move forward, who's being part of that conversation? Is everybody represented? Because if everybody's not represented, these voices aren't being heard. Come with an open mind, come with compromise and willingness to compromise. Listen to the people at the table, listen to what's needed and just look forward rather than focusing on what's already happened. My message is to any young leaders out there, just push on. I know sometimes it can be hard and you might get burnt out, but look at the good. Look at the good you're doing, look at the good that's been done. Enter most situations with quite an open mind and learning mindset, then you'll be able to find new ways to approach what you're passionate about and really try and make a positive, lasting impact on the world. You know, as young people, we get to decide what our future looks like. Um, and I think that's really easy to forget. So I would say really mobilise within your communities, talk to each other and, you know, question the status quo and question our leadership. Don't undervalue the impact that you can have and don't find it too daunting. It really sort of is starting small, whether it's grassroots, whether it's joining a local group that you see that's doing something. Any opportunity you get to just try and take it and speak to politicians and advocate for youth voice as much as physically possible. I cannot change the world, I cannot change the future, but we as a community, as a unity, we can change the world all together. We need to give ourselves a break. We are doing a brilliant job, you know, we are properly changing the world and we can't do that sustainably and continually for our whole lives if we're always beating ourselves up. So take a step back, give yourself a pat on the back and make sure that you're fueled to go into the future and continue making change. The One Young World Summit is amazing. Obviously it brings 190 countries together, people from everywhere, so people can discuss how different peace works in different parts of the countries. It's been really inspiring to see so many people from so many different parts of the world with so many different challenges. I'm a scientist and I talk to other scientists all the time but at the summit I've been talking to journalists, campaigners, authors and everyone has this different approach and perspective on the issue and that's important when you're building the teams um, that can tackle and solve global crises and bring peace. Summits like this when you're gathering together a very diverse range of like-minded people it's, it's always a great start. It's a lot of fun and you can see how the people as me, from different backgrounds, from different countries, they have the same story. The experience we experienced in the past, we don't want anyone to experience it in the future. So, we are not the leader of tomorrow, we are the leader of today.